portfolio is about 90% of success, but you don't want to gamble with the remaining 10%. Hey friends, so we covered how to do your portfolio recently. I want us to now cover the resume or the CV as they call it in Europe. It's pretty surprising how many people do this wrong. In this video, I'm gonna start with four visual tips for you that you can implement right away. And in another video in this series, we'll cover actually what to write in your resume. Because I'm assuming that many of you actually already have a resume. So you're gonna learn how to make a couple of tweaks that are gonna make it instantly better. Ready? Let's bring your resume to the next level. Tip 1. Don't over-design. Especially the artistic types struggle with that. They want everything to be a piece of art. They want everything to be really speaking from their inner soul. And it's really not the role of a resume to do it like that. Additional backgrounds, blurs, decorations, this is all stuff that is actually making your resume harder to read and it basically makes it worse. So remove all distractions. White background and black text is basically almost always the way to go. You can try to be cool and, you know, invert it to have a black background and a white text, but think of it this way. Some companies, especially the larger ones, are pretty old school with the way how they hire people. So chances are that people are gonna print your resume. Now, if their printer is a little bit old and not as great anymore, then a black background can turn out to be an unreadable mess of like jumbled lines and contrast issues. If people get that resume on the table and it's not gonna be readable, they're gonna just crumple it and probably throw it into the basket and they're gonna miss the first time because that only happens in the movies when they actually score the first time. So yeah, don't let your resume become a basketball. Tip two, but it doesn't have to be boring. A resume is functional, so the primary goal of it is to deliver the information. But that doesn't mean that you need to do it in a boring way. You can play around with typography, and my favorite trick is to use just three font sizes, but pick a really beautiful font. And unless you're applying to a law firm, you probably should go with a sans serif one. Three font sizes are also important because, especially as a junior designer, chances are that you haven't nailed typography yet. The more font sizes you do, the more messy the visual becomes and our brains are parsing images based on some simple hierarchy and some simple rules. And if those rules are accidentally broken a little bit because one font well doesn't match the sort of proportions of the other ones, then it's gonna make it harder to read, it's gonna make it look like something is wrong with it. And you know, you don't really want people to think that something is wrong with your resume, right? Three font sizes. The biggest one can be your name at the top, then one for the labels and then one for the actual information. Number three, alignment. Even though Though your resume is just text, make sure that everything is perfectly aligned. Make sure to look up the rule of proximity and how it influences hierarchy. I made a couple of videos on that on this channel, they are UI videos, but actually it translates pretty well to how you should design your resume too. It's all the same principles, it's just a little bit less graphics, right? Another quick tip and something that people do wrong so often is mind-blowing is that make sure that the label is always closer to the data that actually connects with it. So it's not basically in the middle of the two elements that you're not really sure whether the label belongs to the thing below it or the thing above it. This is so common, it makes my head spin. It confuses people and trust me, you don't want to confuse recruiters. You want their experience with your resume to be as frictionless as possible. You can also use the red square method for vertical rhythm and hierarchy. You can learn more about it from my books and courses. It is for UI just as well, but if you treat your resume a little bit like a text-based UI, you're gonna achieve really great results. Another thing many people do wrong is that if you're going multi-column in your resume, make sure that every column's left edge is actually in the same space. It's so often where people do unintended indentations, and it actually sounds pretty funny. Yeah, but those unintended indentations break the rhythm of scanning the line, break the rhythm of scanning the column. And you don't really want that. You want it to be flawless. And number four, color. I believe that in most cases you actually should include your own photo in the resume because it gives you that emotional connection with people and people really crave that. The 
photo should probably be the only colorful thing in your resume. Some people also go with colorful fonts for, for example, the labels or your name. That can work, but make sure that the color is dark enough so it's gonna print okay. And also don't ever use a color for all of the text. I've seen some resumes that went kind of crazy and for example decided that all the text should be blue and yeah. That could work, but let's think about it this way again. If somebody prints it and they are running out of the colorful inks, then you have no idea how that blue is gonna print out. It can be like barely visible gray. Once again, you don't want people to have any trouble reading your resume. So these are my four tips. I asked around some companies that are hiring a lot of designers and a lot of developers, and they said that Next to what's in the resume, actually how it looks like and how easy it is to read is really important. Imagine being a recruiter. You have 50 to 100 resumes to go through every single day. If one of them is causing you trouble because it's really difficult to read, you're probably gonna throw it out. You can try to use color for some backgrounds, but always make sure there is enough contrast and it's best to actually keep it to the backgrounds that if they don't print, it's not gonna be much of a difference. So in my case, for example, the labels on the left side. In the second part on resumes, we're gonna talk about what to write and how to actually prepare your resume for a specific company you're applying to, because yes, you shouldn't have just one should have multiple resumes done in a way that's specific to the company that you're trying to get into. And we're gonna talk about how to tailor made them for those specific companies so your chances of getting the job are higher. And obviously don't forget that portfolio is about 90% of success here anyway. But you don't want to gamble with the remaining 10%, so let's do it right. That video is also coming soon, so don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss it, hit the like button under the video and let me know in the comments what problems have you encountered with resumes or maybe you were a recruiter and you were hiring and you noticed some patterns that you also want to share. And as always, have a beautiful day! Uh -huh.